Hey everybody, welcome. Today we are at the world famous San Diego Zoo. Now we have members passes for this, so we get to go off to this special members entrance section. Makes it a lot easier. And today we have two special guests that are joining us. We get uh, special guest passes, one each, each year. So we're going to be using those today. So come on. Let's go ahead and explore. Now we're going to start our day off with the guided bus tour. This is really nice, gets you around most of the park. And we like to hit this up first thing in the morning as it can get real crowded and be over an hour wait later. Hello there folks and welcome to the world famous San Diego Zoo guided bus tours. My name is Stephanie, but you guys can call me Steph. We're going to be hanging out for about 35 to 40 minutes. Now, all kinds of animals. A couple things real quickly before we get deep into this tour. We like going into the mornings also because the animals tend to be more out as most of these guys do sleep throughout the day. And not only that, there are two different entry sections. We like to sit up top as we found from experience that the lower levels don't get as good of a view of the animals and the surrounding area. And at some point today, that's only if the bus is not moving. You got two feet on the ground, one hand on the rail. Or if I'm telling you that it's okay to stand. Once the bus continues to move, well, you're going to sit right back down. Parents, if you can do me a favor, keep an eye on the little ones. Make sure they don't pluck any of the plants or the flowers here. Not just on my tour, around the zoo as well. A lot of these plants and flowers are either extinct or endangered on the wild. And we like to keep them here alive where wildlife thrives. If you don't believe me, I'll show you a plant at the end of my tour that's completely wiped out. The wild sea doesn't have an idea as to why the zoo has this rule. The last rule is, if you drop an item on my tour, I'm not stopping. This is a continuous 35 to 40 minute tour, so hang on to your things. But if you do drop something, let me know at the end and it will send it to the correct place to look at your item. Alrighty, if this feels like an Asian rainforest, that is because we are headed to the Malayan tiger habitat. We're keeping our eyes out for Connor, Chinta, and Barani, our Malayan tigers. Ooh, what was that? <laughs> Not a terrible. <laughs> Alrighty. So we have one to stand you can. There's a tiger down here, and there's, I think there's a tiger in the top right corner here. Just double check here. So I'm gonna move a little bit more forward here in just a sec. Slowly. Feel free to stand if you want. Just hang on to that rail for me. I know I just told you that rule, but. Oh yeah, top right corner, you'll see one of the tigers hanging out back here. I'm gonna keep going slowly so you guys can all see. We're gonna move directly to the top right. All the way in the back corner there. There's two of them in here. <laughs> One at the bottom left and one at the top right. <laughs> it's the feet. Ah. <laughs> that indicates to me that you barely saw him. It's okay. You can definitely come back here and check him out. You have multiple ways of doing so. You can walk down Tiger Trail, past the Malayan Tapers, past a couple of snakes, and then you'll see Connor in the cave like area. The second viewing area is the one that you just saw, and the third is going to be around the corner to the right hand side. It'll give you another view. Or you can also take the kangaroo bus, which I'll talk about in just a sec. Now, towards the right side, you'll see this little area right here. This is actually the home of the hippos. So this is a river hippo habitat. Now, you're not going to see the hippos right now. They're actually getting their home remodeled, and they got a whole new pool, whole new set of windows, and they just filled it up with water. So now we're really excited because we're close to the end of this lovely project. Now, if you want to see the hippos that are in this habitat, usually, you got to make your way to stop number one in the urban jungle. I'll show you where that's at so you can check it out later. And of course, uh, go visit Amajde and Fulani. Now this next habitat here towards the right side is the home of the Allen Swamp Monkeys and the Red-Tailed Gwinnets. We'll get a glimpse of those little guys here in just a bit. So if you want to stand, feel free to do so. The monkeys here on the right hand side, yeah, you can definitely stand if you want. The monkeys right in front of us are Allen Swamp Monkeys. 
these guys tend to hang out in larger groups and they communicate very well with each other. They can make it through hand gestures and grunts and whenever there's a predator around, those are chirping at each other and they actually have different sounds for different predators. Now, if you take a very close look to the very back side here, you'll see a monkey with like white fur on their cheek and I think they're... Nope, they're alone. There's a baby red-tailed one in the right here too that's how we're looking for him. But that little guy back there is a red-tailed one. Red-tailed one is actually have long red tails. Their tails are actually twice as long as their torso, which helps them maintain that balance when they're really jumping from tree to tree. But yeah, like I mentioned before, there's actually a baby red-tailed one in, in this habitat too. Born a couple of weeks ago, so he's very small. But right now, because that bird flu, we gotta make sure that these guys are gonna be very well protected, so they're going to be in a more cozy island environment. Now they do share their habitat with the Comoran, which you'll see here in this bit as part of the African Bush habitat. Now for those of you that can't see on the left, but can see on the right hand side, you have the Bonka Actually, you don't have a giant elon hanging out back there as well. And the great new zebra, just take a look on the very back side here. Yeah, let's so get a glimpse of the speech gazelle's habitat here. Speech gazelles are very interesting. Whenever they actually have a predator out in the wild, they will blow up their nose like a balloon and let out this loud noise to buy them enough time to escape. They share their habitat with the lesser kudu back here. Feel so free to stand my lower deck and upper deck. If you take a look on the left hand side, you'll get a glimpse of a polar bear back here. This is actually the home of Tati, so we can ship these guys. Unfortunately, our old friends were brought to us here at a very young age from Alaska. Now, of course, if you're wondering how do you keep polar bears cool down in the summer, because it gets really hot here, that's a good question. A lot of the things in our home help us out. As you guys can see, they're home surrounded by trees, providing us the best shade throughout the day. They do have that cloth as well, and providing the shade. You want to see that little guy eating here? If you go on my lower deck on the left hand side, you might get a glimpse of the uh, nice polar bear hanging out back there. You'll also get a glimpse of the Chacon pickeries on the right hand side. Now, Chacon pickeries were actually thought to be extinct up until they were rediscovered in 1972 in southern Paraguay. Of course, later on today, a skunky smell is their urine and one of their many ways of communicating with each other. But like the cougars, they tend to be crepuscular animals. So most likely they'll be sleeping towards the back of these acacia plants. On the left hand side, there's going to be someone born on July 3rd, back in 2014 at the safari park. They are the niece and nephew of another set of lions that used to hang out here. Now, if you do happen to make your way back here, hours after this tour and you still find them sleeping that's actually pretty normal lions tend to sleep for long periods of time they can actually sleep up to 20 hours a day around 250 to 300 pounds and sometimes they do get carnivorous diets they also get femurs and once in a while they do get one animal carcass that they split for the both of them what they call those carcass days We're getting a glimpse of Miss Ellen here on the right hand side. Now we are going to pass another cat right now. This is going to be the Jaguar. I'll speak more about her as we add a life. Another adult back there. This is Rosalina and Bowie. Rosalina and Bowie actually became parents, not too worried. He's going to be on the right hand side. Something's going to be on the left hand side. Sons of an Evil are 13 and 12 years old. And they're one of three African elephants that we have here. Shaba is actually our third elephant here. She's going to be on the other side. And she's the oldest of the matriarch. She's actually the head of it, too. Now, this habitat started off by the lions, and it goes all the way around to the other side of where the camels are. <laughs> 
So of course we're going to try to make our way around here, hopefully get a nice view of these lovely elephants on the other end. Asian elephants, on the other hand, their ears are drastically smaller and different in shape. Another thing you'll notice about them are the tusks. So African elephants, both the males and the females, have visible tusks, as you'll see on the right-hand side. Asian elephants, on the other hand, only the males are the ones that have the visible tusks. Asian female elephants have them hidden towards the back of their mouth, and they look like white little nubs. Look at her. You'll see her on the right-hand side. She is a beauty. She's actually part of my you know, favorite part of the whole tour. I love her. She's so elegant too. But you notice that she's picking a lot of different enrichment items around here. All of these enrichment items actually have food in them. Right there. They may have noticed that we <laughs> Now have you ever wondered what's in that hump? Lard, fat, and protein. Whenever they go long periods of time without eating, they actually have that hump ready to go as a backup. Now, there's two of them in this habitat, and they also share their their home with I want you to get a good view of that wingspan, because it's not fully extended, by the way. So fully extended, they can actually reach from 10 to 12 feet wide, and that's wider than this bus. So this bus, if we're cutting without the American clear, this is a clip sphere. Clip stringers are very interesting. You can't really see it right now, but they have hooves that are very small. They actually, the hooves are the width of dimes. And they work like suction cups for that. And it helps them maintain that balance when they're hanging out at the edge of rocks. Sometimes you'll see them at the very edge of the rock, and they will literally hang out there. That'll be the 16th of this month, so. Really great stuff. <laughs> now towards the right-hand side will be stop number one. Stop number one, of course, being the closest stop to the front of the zoo and to the exit. You also have the cheetahs back there and the giraffes. Speaking about the giraffes, they were hanging out for a couple of the bears. They should be here. Oh, there they are. Yes, I love it. If you take a look on the right side, sleeping right here in this cave, you'll get you'll see this fuzziness back there. I'm gonna move forward for you guys. Hang on for me. You're good. You're good. <laughs> there you go. Go ahead and stand now. Now. This is the home of Alba, Suyana, and Francisco. Alba, Suyana, and Francisco are actually the result of the species survival plan. So, what is the species survival plan? Well, it's like dating apps. Here, you put the profiles and everything, and then we genetically match them up. And hopefully they're able to have babies, and that those babies are able to thrive. Not just here, though, Alba Wild as well. Same thing goes with a lot of the animals around the zoo, the tigers, I'm not quite sure about the lion, I think maybe, it's maybe like endangered animals. So like the uh, uh, Andean bears, soft bears, we see it around here for sure. But in the case of this Alba, she was paired up with her ball. So, I personally suggest you come back here and check them out. You'll get a better view of them too, a closer view of them. Animals? The There's an X-Files episode about that. They try to knock him off of it. Hi guys! <laughs> Yo, mama? So beautiful up here. Such a great view.
That's a church and a bell tower. The uh, AP is very behind us. Daddy's friends are behind us. Huh? One eighteen. In twenty-eight. Yeah, yeah animals. That's good. Animals. Um, um, we'll go see more animals. Want to go see the gorillas? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go see the gorillas. See the bus? Yeah. What color is it? Red. Bye. <laughs> Look, everybody, fake fossils. Pleasure enjoying him. Bunch of red butts. <laughs> Koalas living in style with heat lamps. Kind of jealous. I'm nice. Yeah. I mean, Toby Keith has, has stomach cancer. 
Yeah, I'll do what I can. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah.